My name is Tay Whiteside, and I'm a metal and woodworker here in my hometown of Roanoke, Virginia. And with the help of my friends Riley Murtaugh, an experienced videographer, and Walker Hooper, a post-production specialist, I hope to bring you along with us as we uncover the secrets that a 1920s machine shop has to offer. so exciting to finally see some big pieces come out of here like the point is to be able to use this space and with every hole that you make you're like oh good how can i fill that up you know <laughs> but hopefully with something functional, hopefully with something functional not a, a derelict piece of machinery i'll get that you gotta get that visual David, I met David before, and he is a fantastic character. And the only other free things I got in life is a bloody nose and ride in a police car. Those get easy, they get easier <laughs> each time. Free rides in a police car get easier each time. He, uh, he's got stories for everything. You can tell he's been in this kind of world for a long time. He told me one time he rode a motorcycle down to like Panama and back from Virginia. <laughs> so, so like, he's done a lot showed up today kind of by surprise to pick up a lathe that I told him he could have. It was an old Ryerson, he called it a bombshell lathe, um, which makes sense. The time period was right for that. And that one was just neglected. It needed some help to restore it, which didn't place it in a very desirable market. You know, it needs love, it's hard to move, um, and I need it out of here. Yeah, it's, it's a bombshell lathe. If you look at the World War II, film clips, you'll see women with carts of nothing but shell projectiles mm -hmm. forever, and they're standing at a lathe. So the women just click it in gear. Rosie the Riveter cranking out yeah, bombshells. And then she'll yeah. crank it back. At government training centers all over the country, women are being taught how to handle the machines which are turning out our armaments and munitions of war. More and more women are releasing men for the fighting services. When it comes to welding, the girls prove that they can handle a blowtorch as easily as a cigarette lighter. Young women must be ready to step into their places without loss of time. Months ago, the National Youth Administration, anticipating that need, began to prepare young women for jobs in war industry. Employers in the war production industries are now making use of young women in handling small machine tools, such as small lathes, drill presses, and grinders. Young women have done especially well in those jobs requiring precision and a high degree of manual dexterity. How is this one different than most lathes? It's short. Right. It's absolutely short. So it's short, it's chunky. Yeah. It was for machining projectiles, cannon projectiles. These, yeah. just like this one, are given away every day because they're no damn good for anything. Well, that's how you're getting it. Unless, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know yet what I'm going to do with it, but I'll use it for my friends. It's too good to go to waste. Yeah. It, it, again, will have one specific purpose. I mean, if you got one short job to do once a month, you have other legs in the shop, so it's mm -hmm. not worth even having. But it's for repetitive purpose or to be customized into something for a specific I see. purpose. Could so, be yeah. a blank canvas, sort of. You have prep this a little bit. You've yeah, raised cleaned, it up. Cleaned out some under. You've got some rollers underneath it. Mm -hmm. I'll make a hole for you and then we'll we'll roll it.
really enjoying about moving stuff out is that you pull it out of the dark corners and then you pull it into the light. You can, you can, it looks, you know, you can really take stock of what you got. Yeah. This is the pulley that would have been hooked to the system in the ceiling and it would have turned this, which would turn your chuck. But if you wanted to gear it down, you could engage these big old gears back. What I love about these old machines is that modern stuff would have guards, covers, shrouds. This stuff, you could stick your finger right, right in all the dangerous places. You still got all your fingers? I was just gonna say if you want. Your thumb's been put back on four times. <laughs> <laughs> four different times you lost your thumb? Yeah. It's one cut started there, there. You see where I lined it? It went in there, all the way to there. Went in that one, it came out over here. But that wasn't a record. That was, you see where they were lined up? There was only 34 stitches at one what, time. What happened? You had cut off wheel on a grinder, mm. a brazen cut off wheel, thanks to some other it dummies. Ex it exploded. Somebody no. dropped it and didn't tell you. Stupids over there, the metal moved and made it kick back. Damn. Yeah. I've seen people get real hurt by those cutoff wheels. That one They'll got shatter in your face and all kinds of stuff. Scars. Yeah, I saw a boy in Vancouver get hit in the jugular mm -hmm. and if we hadn't jumped on him and held it, yeah. he would have died. <laughs> His scars gone now, but there's 17 Hold stitches. your thumbs up like this. It's amazing you've lost that one four times. Yeah, well, and I've got... Uh, <laughs> Can you feel it? You got yeah, feeling it? I got four-way fingers that do what they're not supposed to do. <laughs> that one's got 17 stitches you can't see now. It got cut off and was hanging by the leaders. Well, it, it cut it loose and twisted it out of the joint and was uh -huh. hanging down. It sure. Back. Done that New Year's Day drunk moving a liquor still with frozen hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Dude. Yeah. You got some. That is, I am truly amazed that you have all your fingers. <laughs> Me too. That I, is I genuinely amazing. Doing this stuff. And they do cool stuff now. Yeah, doing. <laughs> <laughs> doing, doing rigging, machine work, mechanic work, other mm -hmm. stuff, motorcycle racing and crashes and stuff. And I, I'm still a musician and can still do this till I've been lucky and blessed. I counted up the other time I've been in 20, either 23 or 28 times for stitches. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. You're like, uh, you know, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. Who was that? Six million dollar man. Yeah, yeah, right. So I've, been, I've been on my own since I was 12 years old. Uh huh. Run away from home from sorry ass bunch of white trash and I've been on my own and I had to eat and I had to live so I wound up in these old machine shops a kid as an oiler. Learning from old guys. Yeah and I, yeah. I, I, I wound up on the, on the welding and rigging jobs and stuff as a punk and, and you know things like that and traveling and working and doing it you had to do for yourself and you didn't have nothing. Right. And when you spend your entire lifetime in that environment things like that happen. Would Did you say that those were hard lessons, learning stuff the hard way. <laughs> Some of it was just plain ass accidents even while being careful. Right. Think, you know, the, it, it, the graph goes like this. The longer you don't have the crash, the worse the crash is gonna be when you have the crash. Mm -hmm. If you have little ones, then the angle changes. Right, right, right. And right. sometimes no matter how careful you are, how things happen. I mean, things happen. hazards, man. So I'm just part of the job. Stitches through that head right there and <laughs> eyeball been hanging out and everything else. What? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Stitches here. through there and these scars here. Eyeball popped did you out, eat, head what, smashed. Did you in. drink a lot of milk when you were a kid or yep. you got special skin? <laughs> What's the secret, man? Sure did. <laughs> well, that being said, let's be careful. Okay, yeah. let's move slowly. <laughs> You made a load spreader, is that what this is? Yeah, and the reason I didn't just throw a chain up there and throw it over that, when you're pulling dimensionally like this on the chains and you put the pressure here, uh -huh. you're increasing it mucho fold on that link. Uh -oh. you get a chain pop. So, use two chains and use the yin yang, and now you're doing it in four places instead of one. Mm -hmm. And you're spreading that evenness out. Nice. Okay. 
Okay, that was my brain. Double Thank you. Mm -hmm. And go. Where are you going? Where are you going? So, what do you want for Christmas? <laughs> I wonder what color this thing will used to be. Most of this old shop equipment. That weird green color? That was what they call easy eye green later in the years. Most of this early, early stuff was satin black. Satin black. Most of it. Yeah. Not all of it. Most of it. Half a headroom. We're in over four feet. I say approaching about five foot two or three. Right there, there. That's 51 inches. Okay, not much of a to go this morning and get kind of some essentials, rags and water and that kind of thing. Um, but I did. <laughs> I love those stories. Sweet. Yeah. And then I found five bucks. I'm happy to have it out of my shop. I'm happy that it's going to somebody that will continue to use it, possibly restore it. If not, just hold it for somebody to then put it into use. But. Um, I got some real estate back. You're happy. You got it for the right price, right? Yeah. Free 99. Yeah. Plus shipping and handling, of uh -huh. course. Well, to say the best things in life are free. Give me a hand. <laughs> it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you. Bon voyage. Just talking to somebody who's very knowledgeable and has spent a lot of time in this field is so valuable you know because like i said you can't hardly go anywhere where do you go to look up how to get a remake a part for a 1905 lathe you know this guy's done a lot of work uh, in the oil fields and things where they're moving big stuff all the time so someone who knows the machine but also knows how to move it is hard to find but really nice when you do next time on the machine shop so the smaller version of this was twelve thousand. Yeah, pounds. So I'm guessing this could be up to up to fourteen. So this is the you're telling me this is the the baby version. Yeah, this is the the whole shop version. <laughs> <laughs>